right, so we've done trig functions, and then they actually have inverses as well. So um, some reminders of inverses. We learned that the domain of the inverse is the range of the function, and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original function, way back in 2.8. Um, if we say y equals f of x, then x equals f inverse of y, right? The x and y's are just interchanged. Um, the graphs make those reflections about y equals x. We'll review all this. And basically, they cancel each other out. So f of f inverse is, just brings you back to x. So we'll see all this as we go through the inverse trig functions. So we'll start with arc sine, um, which is the sine inverse function. So we learned that sine has a range of negative 1 to 1. So that'll be my domain of the inverse. Um, but it's not a one-to-one -one function. That horizontal line test, right, doesn't pass. So we're going to restrict the domain. So the easiest way to do this is just to go from negative one to one the first time it happens. So we'll start at pi over two, negative pi over two. We'll go up until we hit one at pi over two. And that covers all the values. If I add any more, then we fail the test. So it's not a full cycle, it's just one version up. So restrict domain to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so then our we call um, the inverse sine, sometimes we call it arc sine, or we call it sine to the negative 1 power. Um, it's not like 1 over sine, it's an inverse function. So that's not the same as 1 over sine x. So that's why people might prefer arc sine. Um, it's an inverse function. So the domain will be negative 1 to 1, because that's the range. And then my range is the domain, the restricted domain. So it'll be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then we'll take the graph. So we'll take that green piece, and we'll reflect it. And here is the graph of arc sine. You'll notice just that the domain and range switch, right? So the original function went from negative 1 to 1, so now my domain is negative 1 to 1. The original function had a domain of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so now that's my range. So you'll see they just switch. So let's try to find some values of arc sine. So here's the formal definition, arc sine or inverse sine. Um, y equals arc sine is the same as if x equals sine of y. So these functions, you'll notice, we're actually outputting an angle. That's a good thing to remember. Versus the input. So my domain and my range. So we use these to output angles. So for all of these next examples, if we're evaluating an inverse sine function, our solution should be an angle. So arc sine of root 3 over 2 is basically saying sine of what equals root 3 over 2. So we'll go back to that unit circle. Um, sine is positive up here. So root 3 over 2. So that'll be... What is that? 60 degrees. Let's stick with radians, pi over 3. Um, it would also be 2 pi over 3, but we just learned the domain was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for arc sine. So we have to restrict the domain so that there's only one output. Otherwise, there's lots of outputs. So the solution would be pi over 3 because that's the angle that makes root 3 over 2, but is also in the domain. All right, negative root 3 over 2 is going to look the same, but down here, right, for a negative value, we're below. And then the domain, again, is only the right side, because it's negative root 2 to root 2. So we'll go with this angle, and this angle would be negative pi over 3. Right, there are more solutions, but because the domain is restricted, um, 
the range is only within on the right side of the graph. All right, and then arc sine of negative one, we get negative one down here. What angle is that? That would be negative pi over two. Right, I'm picking the one that's in this range. So you could also say three pi over two, right? But that's not in the range. Cool, so I'll see you back for arc cosine in the next video.